I'm not an Oregonian by birth. I came from California, which is always a fraught thing, particularly when I moved here in the 1980s, although I laundered myself through Washington, D.C. I grew up in the uh, Bay Area, uh, went to, uh, in, in Oakland mostly, uh, went to high school there, graduated from San Jose State University in 1976, degree in journalism, which is pretty much all I've ever done. I think I've always been a political junkie. I still remember reading The Making of the President, 1968. Uh, uh, Teddy White at the time was very famous and uh, did a whole series of these sort of inside presidential politics that nobody had really done before and being fascinated by that. And the first political science class I took at San Jose State, I'd already pretty much read at least half the reading list before I even uh, took the class. And, and so I, I think I kind of naturally gravitated toward that. I assumed when I came to the Oregonian that I wouldn't be covering politics. I thought I'd be more maybe a general assignment reporter or have a less prominent beat. But the amazing thing was that most reporters at the Oregonian didn't really want to cover politics, didn't really want to cover the legislature. You know, the Oregonian was a really big place. They had merged two newspapers, the Oregon Journal and the Oregonian, and the editors, frankly, were still sort of getting their arms around how to manage this large organization where they would absorbed all the reporters and editors from two different newspapers. So management was a little chaotic there, and you sort of left your own devices or left to the devices of the editor who was right above you. Um, and, you know, there was always this dynamic of they, they wanted broader coverage, more thematic coverage, which is good, but they also really wanted, um, they, they wanted the Oregonian to be the paper of record to and write about anything of any significance that happened down there. And so I and others down there were reporting. I mean, we really hustled a lot. I mean, so much of my time, I remember, would be uh, down downstairs in the press room at the end of the afternoon having two, three, sometimes even four stories to write. You know, I mean, the thing that was so much fun in a way about the legislature was everybody was there in one building. So you could run around the building and talk to a bunch of people really fast. In 30 minutes, you could talk to five people and um, at least for a, a daily story have a pretty good sense, say, a, a bill that had just passed on the floor that you might have known absolutely nothing about in, until it came up on the floor, and you'd sort of learn at least enough to write a short story about. The thing that's difficult about the, the, the legislature, and this hasn't changed, is it's like taking a, a sip from a fire hydrant. I mean, there is just a gusher of news coming out great thing about being a reporter is you are talking to everybody and sometimes it's a you get a wider range of views and that helps give you more perspective I think uh, a lot of times you can go in and talk to a particular legislator and think wow that sounds really impressive and you're sort of drinking the Kool-Aid and then you go and start talking to other people and realize oh wait a minute they weren't talking about this or that or Whatever, and you you learn that after a while that that one thing about being a reporter is you just you you have to talk to a lot of people. You have to just really triangulate the information you get, and and a lot of times uh, it's important to sort of get documents too that uh, that that really give you a much more unvarnished record uh, in many cases of what really happened, you know. Some people you learn you can rely on more than others in terms of giving you a more or less factual account of, of what they know. And some people are just out and out liars, you know. And some legislators are such good quotes uh, that they get sort of irresistible to reporters. You can call them and you can know they'll say, something interesting in other people that actually may be pretty thoughtful about stuff, but um, either they don't like talking to reporters very much or they really don't make it easy to, to or don't say things in a way you can uh, 
transmit to, to, to readers very easily. I think as a political reporter, you, you develop a personality where you tend to see a lot of shades of, of gray as things. And you know, if you're a real crusader for a, a certain point of view, I think it becomes frustrating to, to stay a political reporter. I mean, I think a lot of people who do that, they eventually go off to other kinds, either other kinds of writing, more uh, opinion-oriented uh, writing, or get involved in politics and, and that kind of thing. The state's political culture felt very insular at the time. What made it interesting was that it was less partisan or the partisan lines were more scrambled than they were in in many states and certainly as they are uh, more scrambled than they are now around the country. I mean our politics have just gotten so much more partisan and Oregon would have been really on that end of being less partisan. Now it didn't mean they didn't have ideological battles and fights but there were several Republicans that were more liberal than many Democrats. I mean, some of the most conservative people in the place were Democrats. You could find Democrats in rural areas. There were Republican legislators in the city of Portland even. And so that made for a, a, a different kind of uh, place, certainly. Still, the, I think the biggest change I've seen in Oregon politics uh, that kind of was happened, it almost seemed all in one year in 1990. That was, to me, like this, this fulcrum year in Oregon politics where things were one way in 1989 and quite a different thing in 1991. I mean, think about it. In 1990, um, the Republicans took over the House. That was the least of it. The voters passed Measure 5, which completely changed the school finance system. Uh, you know, people used to say uh, after that passed, the real governor of the state is Measure 5. You know, that's one thing sort of Barbara Roberts, who was elected that year, had to, to battle with this perception that there were forces more powerful than she in charge. You know, in many ways, the, the agenda was set for several years by Measure 5, and that changed a lot. Also in 1989, um, the northern spotted owl was listed as a threatened species, I think it was. And, um, and so that quickly led to restrictions on logging in, in federal forests. And uh, all of a sudden, the state's politics got much more split between ur ur urban and rural. There were, had always been urban-rural divides, but it got a lot more intense after that. But another force that was taking off then was um, religiously oriented conservatives and the Oregon Citizens Alliance was kind of at the height of its power then. You know, there th that was a group formed out, out of this uh, failed challenge Joe Lutz had made to, to Bob Paquit in the 1986 Republican primary. And uh, his follow his followers, Lutz was a, a Baptist minister, and uh, his followers formed this group called the Oregon Citizens Alliance, and and they sort of cast about for various issues, and what they really settled on was being, frankly, a very anti-gay organization. You almost don't say, <laughs> it's funny as a reporter, because you know, you'd say, well, an anti-gay rights, but I mean, they were really pretty openly just anti-gay. Information is not as held as closely in the legislature. I mean, you can learn a lot about the legislature now, just even if you're kind of a citizen lobbyist or somebody watching from afar, just by uh, going to their website. You know, you can stream hearings, and there is much more direct access to the legislature. And, um, you know, that uh, that's helped actually, I think, bring a lot of specialty coverage to the legislature. You know, it's much easier for beat reporters in Portland, whether they're covering health care or education or transportation, to follow those issues down at the legislature and bring an expertise. And I think explanatory journalism is still really important to help people understand a lot of these 
complex topics that that uh, that we deal with. I got to put in a plug for Oregon Public Broadcasting that's gone, uh, that now has a really robust reporting staff. I mean, just in the four years I've been there, it's really increased a lot. I think there's now around 20 reporters uh, for OPB, you know, all covering stuff that involves the legislature to some degree, you know, environment and science, health care, um, just straight political coverage. Uh, I did a lot on housing and transportation this year uh, and on and on. So uh, I really think OPB has become a much more powerful uh, presence in the, the news media ecosystem. So, I mean, a lot of the young reporters, I admire them a lot. They're very aggressive. They use the Public Records Act, you know, really well. Um, the, uh, and a lot of them maybe you could argue come with a little bit more of a point of view. Certainly some of the, uh, what we used to call the alternative media, whether it's Willamette Week or Portland Mercury, both of them are going pretty strong and they come with a pretty strong point of view a lot of times to stuff, although based on, on reporting. Sometimes I feel like a little bit of a dinosaur saying, oh, a little bit, you know, on one hand this and the other hand that. And I've been one that sort of has made an effort to sort of really understand all points of view. And maybe that is more bland coverage that uh, people aren't looking for in the internet world. We're, we're so bombarded by information now. And so a story really makes impact if people really perceive it's new information they didn't know before or a spin on information they hadn't thought of, something that gets, frankly, their juices flowing.